actually would like you I to am tell, very tell disappointed yes. with the 12th uh, with the 13th parliament maybe they don't know i am very disappointed especially with the voters of kenya yes and more specifically i am very disappointed with the voters of central kenya mount kenya region Talk because we no longer vote people for what they stand for we vote for people because they are either musicians they are cake matrons, Money. they are comedians, they are out, outstanding, people who are outstanding in the society as, yeah. you know, aggressors, aggressors yeah. the bling blings. Those are the people we are voting. And, and I'm sorry, if I'm stepping on anybody's toe, I, I ask for forgiveness. But that's the truth. So when you elect a musician, just because he guitared and you loved his music, and you want him to carry your life, carry, carry your livelihood, then we are wrong. And finally it was dropped. And finally it was dropped. It was not dropped because it was not a good bill. It was dropped because it was Wamushomba proposing it. And Wamushomba was proposing that bill against her earlier decision of voting no to finance bill. So members of parliament from Kenya, Kwanzaa government, were very upset with me because I stood out. Some of them felt like I didn't do the right thing for saying no to finance bill. And then they're asking, so you dropped the finance bill. You said no to finance bill. And then you want to bring a bill that is now taking our budget. So we are not going to approve this because you said no to finance bill. So they actually dropped a very sober bill just because of politics just because of interests, just because they wanted to prove to the party leader that they are loyal and anybody who is against the grain must be punished. So I was punished not because of my mistake, but because of standing with the truth and fighting for the rights of people. I'm not trying to say that I am good, but I'm trying to say Parliament requires brains, yeah, oh, requires soberness, yes. requires people who are serious. Don't elect somebody just because this person is rich and you don't even know where he got this money from. You don't even know what, what are his principles in life. I think it's time we learned a lesson. Listen, my sister. Yes. Just the other day we voted out a bill. We, we voted a bill in. Yeah to close all children's homes. And that day I was not in parliament. I was actually not in the country. So I was following mm -hmm. parliament online. It was, it was easier to vote that. And I saw people say, nee, and a yeah, against a bill, or towards a bill, that is going to punish the orphans, orphan children of Kenya. We have councils for the youth. We have councils that are, are, are talked about women and issues of women, but we don't have a council that can sit down and do research and tell us how many elderly persons of Kenya cannot hear, how many cannot elderly see. persons of Kenya need glasses or need cataracts, need eye operations, how many elderly persons need insulin, how many elderly persons need mobility aids like yeah, wheelchairs sticks. and walking sticks. Yeah. We don't have any council that deals with that. Yet we have a council that tells us we have this very many children who require wheelchairs. We have this many children who require special schools for the disabled, for the hearing, for the, for the deaf, for the, for, the, for the blind. But we don't have a council for the elderly person. Who speaks for them? Who advocates for them? Who budgets for them? Who fights for them? Nobody. So my bill was actually introducing a new council. Wow. Hello viewers and welcome to our show and like I told you we are changing lives we are continuing to talk to stakeholders in this country about the issues affecting our older persons and our country in general and that is why we not do without getting our guest here today who is very passionate about the issues of our older persons and has been with all her heart pushing the bill on a senior citizen and today with us we have none other than the honorable for Gidongori constituency mm. Kiambu County mm. uh, that is the former 
women rep, uh, Kiambu County. That is the famous and the only one, Radhoni Wamushomba. Mushimuyo, good evening. To you, my dear. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Very good. Finally, we do this. I know. Thank yeah, you. After, I know you are very busy. After, imagine. after very many um, months. months of planning. Yes. Yeah, so today is a parliamentary day, so I am from Bunge. Yes. As usual, today was the opening day after a recess of about uh, a month. Yes. So the intro is full. Thank you so much. That's and because we I'm a chair not... of a committee that yeah. oversights the implementation of the Constitution of Kenya, yes. I had very many meetings today yes. just to catch up and uh, clear my entry. Yes. Yes. And imagine through that schedule, you are here. Yes, we I'm are happy. very grateful. For, for the people of Kenya <laughs> and for the welfare of the livelihood of the people of Kenya, I, I would give all my best. And imagine what touches almost everyone today, Moshimu uh, Agadoni. Mm. You are here not because we are in Gedongori. Yeah. We are here because we are touching issues mm. concerning the Kenyan person. Mm -hmm. So today, there are a lot of Kenyans out there. They just hear the name. They just have seen you on photos. They have just seen you doing all the right things, I would say, standing for the common Mwanainchi. Mm. And, but they, don't, they know very little about you. And I think it's the high time you get out of Kidunguri. Yeah. It's the high time you get out of no, Kiambu. No, 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 no. People of Kidunguri are not yet done with me. <laughs> they no. will only be done with me when uh, my contractual period and time is over. So I basically have to um, serve the people of Kidunguri. And because God has given me extra energy, that extra energy, I put it uh, on other topical issues like the aging community. Okay. I'm very passionate about the elderly persons In of fact Kenya. You are. Very so, passionate because I hate seeing people getting oppressed. I hate seeing people people's rights being violated. Yeah. Sometimes I find myself behaving like an act activist because I don't want, you know. Yeah. I don't want to see people lose out on their on on the rights on the yeah. rights that we have. Yeah. You know, for a long time fought for. Why did we fight for the freedom of this country if we if our people cannot enjoy the fruits of the of what they fought for? So Very unfortunate. That makes me really feel like I should do what I do. So much when I say it's the high time you get out of Gidugori, yeah. I don't mean you stop serving the people of Gidugori. It's the high time the rest of Kenyans know who you are because mm. you serve all of us. Oh, yeah. Me, I met you through service. Mm. I don't come from Gedongori, mm. but there are issues concerning the older persons. Mm. Imagine, I think you are the only member of parliament. I took my phone without having met, called, and you answered. And you said anything to do with the Kenyan older persons, you'll be there. And again, today you are here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, Moesh, mm. before we continue, Tell us who is Gadoni, where did you grow up, how did you end up being <laughs> now in all these committees uh, where you are, how did you start fighting for us? I, I think uh, I am a daughter of Mau Mau, I'm, I'm a descendant of the Mau Mau, so I have that fighting spirit. And that fighting spirit is backed by how I was, you know, brought up. I socialized. How I was socialized, where I grew up. I grew up in Komoda in Gidunguri in a very remote village called uh, Kefau Ine. And I went through my primary school education in a public uh, rural school called Kiawairia Primary. I was a bright girl. I was born in between two boys, so I became a bit more abrasive and aggressive because, of course, you know, there was a lot of competition when I was growing up. I was in the middle of two boys, so I kept looking for my space. Hey. Yeah, I kept looking for my space because they were always suppressing me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, having been a, been a bit, you know, intelligent, I performed quite well and I went to um, a Catholic school where I also performed very well and I went wow. to University of Nairobi. Yes. I pursued my first degree in, in education. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later on, I find myself in the media. Wow. And uh, all along, I've been a very vocal person, very outgoing. Um, yeah, very vocal, actually. Yes. I started being, vo be being vocal when I was a small girl. What were you advocating for? I don't know, but my mother tells me that I was all over. I all mean, singing, 
singing all over, composing songs all over. Yeah, yeah, controlling everybody around me. <laughs> so I, I, I think that's my personality, and yes. I'm a very, I'm a very sociable person. Yes. I accommodate quite a lot of people. Yes. And uh, um, I think that outgoing personality and, yeah. and getting to you know work with people very well and, and sociable yes. has made me who I am. I am very accommodative. I accommodate a lot of people and a lot of issues in my life. And that, that's how I am able to you know, deal with the matters, maternity matters, elderly. I, am finding, I find myself everywhere because I want to make everybody happy. Wow. So how did you get into politics? Um, when I served in the media, I served in, most people know me for my radio appearances. Yes. I used to work in the radio. Actually, after university, I never taught. I yes. never taught much in the... Although you studied uh, education. Yes, I yeah. did education. Yeah. I was supposed to be t teaching in, ex in economics and yes. business-related courses. Yes. But I never taught much because um, by the time I was a third year, I was already working for a radio station. Yes. Basically because my kikui was very good and I was young. And the wow. station was looking for a young girl who can speak good kikui, kikui. kikui and also very intelligent. So wow. I found myself in a job where I was speaking a lot of kikuyu. I was producing a lot of informative shows. So I found myself in, in, in radio. And that radio experience for 24 years wow. exposed me into this country, made me popular made me known across the country, especially within the Kikuyu or Gemma community. And um, as I progressed with my education, I found myself promoted to, you know, management of the station. I, I, I became an owner of a station and I went up the lander. Then I realized that just being on radio and speaking matters on radio does not really give me fulfillment. I think I needed a platform where I am the one now doing it. I tried empowering people and livelihoods, but I thought I needed a better platform where I can empower people in a more significant and impactful way. So um, because I was popular and uh, I had cut already my niche in terms of, you know, my public appearances, yes. I thought... Um, that would help me in my political... I just needed space to, yes. you know, work and be more impactful. Yes. I needed freedom. Yes. And the reason why I actually went to politics is because I was troubled by alcoholism. Because I came, I came from a family where we were affected very much by alcohol. Uh -huh. um, my parents, dis uh, my, my family disintegrated rather. Yes. Um, because of my parents' involvement in, you know, in substance abuse. Yes. And therefore, it's like I had a wound that I needed to heal. So yes. when I got a platform on radio, I started fighting illicit brew. I went to Kirinyaga. I remember that time there was a alcohol we used to fight, used to be called Makavo. Yeah. I went to Dadora. I went to Nyahururu. I went to Nyandarwa, Nakuru. And I realized the more I did this thing, the more yeah. I, I, I tried to rescue people from alcoholism, yeah. the more I tried to sensitize people around issues of addiction, the more I tried to speak about the vulnerable, yes. the more passionate I became. Yes. And so along my work on radio, then I was working for Kameme, I, I got arrested because of speaking about what? alcoholism. And actually, I did a campaign where I was actually telling Kenyans yeah. to destroy the illicit brew. Yeah. And so people went out and destroyed every drink, drink, drinking den. They destroyed... You Through know, your influence? Yes, on radio. So yeah. I was arrested and I was taken to court by various people, including then politicians, some of them yeah. who are even in this National Assembly today. Yeah. yeah, I was taken to court by politicians, I was taken to court by businessmen, and even my, my colleagues in the media. Because I'm, the, I'm that one person who speaks the truth. If I know you're selling illicit alcohol, I will say it. So I found myself in the wrong books. But I thank God Kenyans came out for me. Wow. And the then president, President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, during his first term, yes, um, came through for me. Wow. And and actually, he took over my my echo. He echoed what I was talking about, and he actually told MPs to go to their villages and 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 and, 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 and eradicate illicit brews. Wow. So he actually made it a national rally call out of what I was doing on radio. So what I did is that I, I partnered with all the radio personalities that were there in the Gema community then. Yes, the, yes. Those that were broadcasting in all the language, the Kiembu, the Kimeru, 
Kikuyu, Kikuyu yeah. and uh, Kirinyaga. And we yeah. decided to partner, you know, as all wow. radio personalities. And we, we did a very rigorous campaign. Wow. That's when people realize, oh, you mean Gadoni can be influential. You mean Gadoni is that firm. She can stand firm even when she's being threatened and by OCPD. This, wow. And uh, I was arrested and, and that's it. And I went to court. And even today, I'm still handling those, some of those cases. They are civil cases. I'm still sorting them out. I think t 20, it was 2014 to date. How many years are those? 2014 is almost, almost 10, 20, years, 10, 10 years. 10 years. Yes. 10 years. Yeah. I've been handling those cases and uh, I've been paying bills. But I, I, I thank God. I'm sure out of what I did in 2014, yes. I have a husband somewhere who would not have become a husband if I never did what I did. Oh, wow. I do, thank God that maybe there are kids that were born out of, you know, what yes. we did. Yes. I thank God maybe there was a livelihood that was recovered and yes. was, was impacted yes. through what I did. So then that's when I realized, oh, you mean I don't have power? So I need to have more power so that I can continue fighting illicit yeah. alcohol. Yeah. I can continue protecting and fighting for the rights of the, of the vulnerable. Yes. So I decided I'm going to join politics. So I declared in 2016 that I'm yeah. going to buy. Yeah. So, and people were very happy with me. And I thank God they gave me the highest number of votes ever. As a women rep. Yes, I got almost a million votes. I got yeah. 988,000 votes. Who wouldn't have voted? And I was, the most, uh, I, was, I, was, I was the most highly elected person in Kenya then because the rest of the people who were... I was actually number three. Number one was Uhuru Kenyatta. Number two was uh, Raila Odinga. I was number three. What? And I was not vying for a national seat. I was just wow. vying for a woman rep seat. Wow. And so I joined politics. When I joined politics, I thought I would get, you know... I thought it was a platform for me to fly out, but it was my platform to fall down. Because all what I wanted to do when I was on radio, I thought I would do them like this in Parliament. When I went to Parliament, I realized it's a house of bureaucracy. It's a house of procedures. It's a house of systems, and you have to align yourself. So I got very frustrated because, of course, I thought I would make a bill and write a bill the way I write my notes and the way I'm writing my PhD or my master's program. Yeah. I would do my proposal and within three weeks I'm done because yeah. I'm sharp. Only to go there and find, oh, it's a high of procedure. So I proposed my first bill. Actually, my first ever bill was an amendment to amend the Health Act so that we can criminalize, criminalize serial offenders of sexual abuse. I struggled with one amendment for about three years. Then I realized, oh, these are house of procedures. You just don't wake up in the morning and just craft a bill. You do an amendment, you have a procedure to follow, you have legal counsels to counsel you, you have notes to prepare, you have committee to vet you, you are vetted, you are... You know, it's, it's a whole process, like doing a PhD, you know, it's a long process. Yes. So I got frustrated because... Parliament kept lapsing. We went for recesses after recesses. Yes. And my bill would be taken back to a, to a, to a fresh. Yes. When you close a session in Parliament, yes. if you had a motion, you have to reset it again. If you had wow. a bill, you have to reset it again. So I kept doing this and I started getting very frustrated. Yes. So finally, my, my amendment for the Health Act and my Sexual Offences Act amendment were merged. And were made one. It were, it were made to become one amendment, which was taken by Emilio Diambo. So I gave up my bill. Then I decided, okay, let me start another bill. Let me take care of my elderly persons. Because when I was there, I was on a radio as a radio presenter. I used to go to the villages and give my elderly persons blankets. I would go and feed them because the one I realized the elderly people were neglected. They were discriminated against. They were abused. So I decided when I was on radio, my CSR was to go in the villages and just give them unga. So I started assimilating and associating myself with the, with the predicaments of the elderly persons. So I thought, now that I'm in parliament, can I make a bill just to cushion them? So I proposed a very technical bill, a bill on geriatric care. Geriatric means um, uh, matters to do with the elderly persons. medication. Actually, it yes. is medicine mm -hmm. for the elderly. Mm -hmm. So I decided because in, 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 my, my, in, my, in the previous parliament, that is 11th parliament, yes. there was somebody who had proposed a bill on, um, on older persons care, yes. which was a Senate bill. Yes. So I thought instead of calling it 
an older person's bill, let me yeah. call it geriatric bill, yeah. and uh, focus myself more on medication part because somebody else had done care part. Yes. Then along the way, we can merge the bills. Yes. So I did geriatric bill. Unfortunately, the elder person's care bill, which was a Senate bill, lapsed. Mm -hmm. So mine was left surviving. So I pushed the bill through the first reading. It went through. I went through the second reading. It went through, but the third reading, it was, it, was, it was opposed, it was rejected. So my, 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 my bill was more on how to make sure that we take care of the medical needs. It was very heavy on medical needs of the Because that is what geriatric. actually, that is what older people need. More. I realized yeah. that we invest so heavily on you and me when we're young. Yes. And all of us have a medical cover. If oh, I'm yeah. employed in, in the government, I have yeah. a medical cover yeah. put a, paid by the government. Yes. If you're working for a private corporation, for example, they have medical covers. Yes. And medical insurance. But when you grow old, all those cards lapse. All those medical covers expires. And you are sent home desperate, hopeless, and that is the time you are prone to diseases. Actually, Kenya, we do the, the opposite. opposite. Instead of giving the, our elderly persons those medical insurance covers when they are 65 and above, we give a young generation medical covers. 25 years and they are and not prone to diseases. Yes. In fact, to me, medical insurance is a business in Kenya. Yes. It's really a profitable business because when you cover the young people, the possibility and probability of sickness that is a costly disease for the young people is lower than a possibility and probability of an elderly person getting, getting an ailment that is very expensive. So I thought, why should, we then, why should I not then come up with a law that says if you have a medical cover, when you retire, that medical cover should not be stopped. Rather, your employer should continue paying for that medical cover a small amount of money, and then the government should subsidize and take over. So the government should take over my medical card when I retire. Yes. And it was a very good uh, proposal. Bill, yeah. And most of the members of parliament debated that bill for the first reading. They debated for the second reading, and it was a very good bill. I also recommended that every county should have a home care for the elderly, mm -hmm. a place where elderly of that county can actually congregate, in their family socialize, area, yes. share stories, yes. share their stories and their experiences, yes. and pass time together. Because when they are together, they don't grow old faster. Exactly. They don't suffer dementia to those extent, yes. extents yes. And, and other challenges that the elderly uh, citizens uh, do suffer. And I, I had also proposed that um, for every level three hospital to level six hospital, we should have a special ward for the geriatric. And I, my argument was this. We should actually introduce geriatric medicine into our hospital. We have pediatric medicine. We have gynecological medicine. We have all manner of specialization. Yes. And uh, children below the age of five are never mixed with the patients of age above five. They are pediatric. So we have special wards for yeah. pediatrics. Why yeah. do we have special wards for pediatrics? It's because their medication is different. And they are fragile. Their yeah. diet is different. Yeah. The doctors that attend to those pa uh, ped pa uh, children are pediatrically ch uh, trained. Yes. They are specialists, yes. and even the environment where these children need to be, need to be special environment. Yes. I also thought that as much as our children are vulnerable, yes. the elderly people are also vulnerable. Yes. So my recommendation was we make special wards for the elderly, where the diet will be special, the healthcare provider would understand the problems of the elderly, and therefore they will handle them with care. Yes. The elderly is can share their issues when they are together in the ward. That's correct. And their dignity is sustained, yes. or rather it is observed. Yes. Because I realized if there's anywhere we, in, we, 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 we indignify our elderly, it's yes. in during medication. Yes. We are in a situation where as long as you are a female or male, 
whether you are 24 years old or 70 years old, because you're male, yes. you are put in the same ward. Yes. So, Ma when male the, ward. so the male ward has a 24-year-old boy yeah. against a 70-year-old grandfather. Yes. And therefore, when the grandfather is being cleaned or being changed, you know, cloth, changing, changing his clothes or even feeding, yes. even some of them who are not able to, to you know, take care of their inner, inner needs, you know, like going to the toilet, feeding themselves. I mean, the 24-year-old is exposed to the 70-year-old, and the 70-year-old feel very indignified, and that is why most of them refuse to go to hospital. So the question of dignity is out. So I thought we should bring yeah. back dignity in, uh, yeah. in, our, in, our, in our medical care. So yeah. I propose that we should have special words for them. The for the, for persons, the elderly yeah. persons of yes. Kenya. Yeah. And therefore I introduce that in every training institution, that is our Kenya medical training colleges, yes. our universities that yeah. are offering medicine, yes. we should actually introduce geriatric medicine. Wow. Mm, geriatric nursing. Yes. Right now we don't have nurses that really are trained to take care of the elderly sick. So that was heavy. It was a heavy bill, very heavy. And obviously it was a money bill. And therefore, it was eating into our budget. And therefore, I had to go to the budget committee and defend it. I had to go to the finance committee and defend it. I had to go to the committee of justice and legal affairs and defend it. I had to go to the committee of health and defend it. And finally, I had to go to the committee of labor and social protection. Wow. So it took me five committees to defend my, 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 my bill. I don't think there's any other bill that, has, that went through a vigorous vetting like Wamushomba's bill. And finally it was dropped. And finally it was dropped. It was not dropped because it was not a good bill. It was dropped because it was Wamushomba proposing it. And Wamushomba was proposing that bill against her earlier decision of voting no to finance bill. Wow. So members of parliament from Kenya, Kwanzaa government, were very upset with me because I stood out. Some of them felt like I didn't do the right thing for saying no to finance bill. And then they're asking, so you dropped the finance bill. You said no to finance bill. And then you want to bring a bill that is now taking our budget. So we are not going to approve this because you said no to finance bill. So they actually dropped a very sober bill just because of politics, just because of interests, just because they wanted to prove to the party leader that they are loyal. And anybody who is against the grain must be punished. So I was punished not because of my mistake, but because of standing with the truth and fighting for the rights of Kenyans. And it is not me who was punished. It was the elderly people of Kenya whose rights would have been protected, whose violation would have been stopped if this bill came to pass. I feel very pain, I feel very bitter about it because I would have loved to dignify the life of an elderly person of Meru, an elderly person of Trokana, that voiceless elderly person of Homa Bay by providing for the right medication procedures, providing for the right medication protocols for our elderly. Now that bill was not only about medication. That bill was dignifying the, right, the lives of elderly persons. How? I had proposed that in every constituency, we should have a special desk, reporting desk, that would handle matters, legal matters of the oh, elderly. Persons, yeah. Because the elderly persons of this country are subjected to serious discrimination. Yes. Some of them are losing their assets. They have no power to have any person to defend them. So I had said the office of the bootsman should have a department for the elderly persons wow. so that the bootsman can be providing uh, lawyers pro bono for our elderly persons so that our elderly persons will have the right to enjoy their properties even at their senile age. Wow. I had proposed a whole board, new board, that is going to be financed by the budget of the National Assembly to manage matters elderly. For wow. example, we have the, uh, the board that manages matters disability. We have a national board that manages mat youth, matters women. youth. 
we have uh, actually two boards that manages matters disability. Yes. But we don't have any board, any council, any council, national council of any people commission. living with disability, national trust for people with disability. We have councils for the youth. We have councils that are, are, are talked about women and issues of women. But we don't have a council that can sit down and do research and tell us how many elderly persons of Kenya cannot hear? How many cannot elderly see. persons of Kenya need glasses or need cataracts, need eye operations? How many elderly persons need insulin? How many elderly persons need mobility aids like yeah, wheelchairs sticks. and walking sticks? Yeah. We don't have any council that deals with that. Yet we have a council that tells us we have this very many children who require wheelchairs. We have this many children who require special schools for the disabled, for the hearing, for the, for the deaf, for the, for, the, for, the, for the blind. But we don't have a council for the elderly person. Who speaks for them? Who advocates for them? Who budgets for them? Who fights for them? Nobody. So my bill was actually introducing a new council. Wow. And this council was supposed to manage <laughs> the budgetary issues of the elderly persons, coordinate who is managing a home care, for example, a home care center, come up with the protocols and procedures of you starting an elderly people's home. Yes. We have had stories and fairy tales of how our elderly are being man mismanaged yes. and, and mishandled. Because there's no law. There's no law. Yes. There are no protocols. If I want to start an elderly people's home, yeah. I just give a room and I drop mattresses. There's and they, nothing to protect There is you. nothing to protect There's nothing them. to protect the patient. Yes. There's nothing to protect even the doctor Even who comes the qualification yes. for you to there. start off an elderly person. No training. There's no, no skills. training. Yes. So we needed something, some council that would come up with the regulations and protocols. Yes. Rules and regulations of the do's and the don'ts yes. when you're handling the elderly person. Yes. So anyway, that bill was heavy. So, Moesh, so they what said, reason? they said, yes, my bill is a money bill. That. Yeah. And money bill will definitely eat, eat into the national budget. And the country cannot afford to introduce a new board, a new council. Of, just because of older persons? Just because of older persons. I felt offended. I felt like we are selfish. I felt like members of parliament think they will re forever remain young. I felt like members oh, of parliament forget that they were born by parents who are elderly and require care. And I felt like members of parliament became selfish because they can afford to give their parents care. But there's somebody out there who cannot be able to give their mothers, their elderly fathers care. And therefore we were providing for the legal provisions, medical provisions, social provisions to take care of our elderly person. So I felt like parliament was unfair to the people of Kenya and that bill is going to come back. I am going to work it out and I'm going to present it afresh. If I'm, I happen to come back as a member of parliament, I will still bring it back because I believe that's the right thing to do. And if I don't come back as a member of parliament, should I ever hold any, any office in future that will give me the opportunity to bring that law into power? I will do so for the sake of our parents. Now, wow. finally, that bill, not only dignified uh, elderly care, it also gave priority service to our elderly persons. Wow. Priority service means if an elderly person goes to hospital, he or she does not necessarily have to queue. This parent served this country during their young age. They were productive and they earned their respect. And therefore, they should not queue when they go to Huduma Center. They should not queue when they go to see the DCC, the chief. They should not queue when they go to the airport. They should not queue when they go to, for any government service. And I think I was taking a queue from developed countries. If you go to like Emirates, the Dubais, yes. the Emirates, yes. the seven Emirates, British countries, the Europe countries, Japanese countries, you know, Taiwan countries, Malaysia, the Asian Indonesia, yeah. you will be shocked how they treasure their elderly persons. And elderly persons are supposed to, to, be, to get what I call priority service. Today, if you go to Kenyatta National Hospital, you'll find the elderly persons in the queue, waiting to go to x-ray, waiting to go to see a doctor. And they are squeezing, you know, amidst young people. 
So I had proposed that uh, we make it a law. Should it be in the train, should it be in the air, airport, should it be in the public transport like our Matatu stages, yeah. should it be in the Huduma Center, we allow our elderly persons to get to first give them priority, priority. Yeah. when it comes to treatment. And okay. that was the recommendation. Last but not least, I had um, recommended that the elderly persons of Kenya um, should be given um, not what we are giving them today, what I call the, discri the discriminative social protection uh, uh, package. And I had recommended that if you are 65, it doesn't matter whether you were working as a government civil servant or you were not working, whether you are employed or not employed. So long as you are Kenyan. As long as you are a Kenyan and you have achieved the age of 65, which is defined by the Kenyan constitution wow. as the elderly age of Kenya, you qualify for the social protection. I had also recommended that the social protection package, the Inua Jamii, should not be handled by Ministry of Labor. I had recommended that social protection be handled and managed by that special council, National Council for, for Elderly Persons of Kenya. So I had recommended that the council is established and that council has many departments and one of the departments was a council that has, the, has data of who is elderly, where is that person, what the, is the shortcoming of that person in terms of livelihoods, and what are their social needs, and how should the social protection package be given. Wow. It was a heavy bill, it was an all-inclusive bill, and finally, by the way, I had also recommended that amongst our community social health workers, we train part of wow. community health workers as geriatric care caregivers. caregivers. Because right now, we are training our community volunteers and community health workers as a general attendant. But we have not trained them on matters and the care of the older persons. The care yeah. of the older persons. So I had recommended that a section of those community health workers get a special course that is going to help them to take care of the elderly. Wow. So it was a heavy bill. I took a lot of time. In fact, I had to stop. I have to some, at some point drop out from my PhD program to oh. concentrate on this bill. It took me two years of revisiting. Remember, I introduced this bill in 2020, yeah. yes. before COVID. Yes. So when COVID came, we, we, were, uh, we were sent online. Parliament was done online. And therefore, most of the bills were not able to move because we wow. needed to actually be you know, present physically. So I came back, this parliament after 2022, I thank God the great people of Gidunguri realized that I'm a good lawmaker and sent me back to parliament. So I presented my bill again and went up to the third reading and, uh, sorry, th uh, second reading um, uh, voting and politics of the day dropped my bill. I believe there is a God that takes care of wow. the elderly person wow. and that God will fight it out. Wow. And one day, one time, such a bill will see the light of day wow. as a law. Wow. So Moesh, on behalf of all those organizations in this country that fight and do the little they do for the older persons is the reason you are here today. It is on demand because a lot of them never understood what happened to the bill. But we are so grateful that you did what you did. It is really unfortunate that people born of a father and a mother could decide the punitive financial bill comes first. It is unfortunate that the housing levy financial bill came first. It is unfortunate that all these other necessary bills came first. But you stood and you are blessed by these older persons. The persons we are talking about, they, cons they constitute your more than 3% of the population of this country. And all those other countries that you mentioned, what is their care. Every day we see our Kenyan people flocking to those countries to do what? To take care of who? 
they're old. Actually, we have a quite person. a big percentage of workers yes. who have left this country to go to those countries. To work. To work as geriatric caregivers. Yes. For those countries that value their older persons. And they have laws. Yes, and they have laws. The way. Number one is law. Yeah. Because like you're saying, people would want even, uh, even independent people to establish sure. homes. But there's nothing to protect you. You need a law to protect you, the person who is gathering these older people putting there. You, these people who are there, the other day we had a case in Dogoto. Dogoto, yes. Yeah. I visited the, 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 the home. The people, the old poor ladies who are working there, they just volunteer. The mother's union, they have no know-how of anything, how even to detect even, a, a, I mean, a, a pressure wound on an older person. When they are developing, the, the, uh, when they are developing um, dementia, they will never tell what it is. And maybe these are even the reasons they were accused of beating them. They think they are just one and Jifanya. So all these things, you put up, you come up with such a beautiful bill, and it is Gadonu Amshomba. I think Kenyans are not stupid. Wajinga Walisha, Kenya, I'm glad the president is reminding us every day. Wajinga Wameisha. Because you cannot tell these older persons, they voted. Some of them were being wheeled there in wheelchairs to vote somebody in power so that they can be safe in their yeah, own country. Yeah. You talked, to, I imagine the one about at 60 years. When you retire, your, your, your medical count is cancelled. And this is the time you are started on cocktail or medications, arthritis, blood pressure, all these diseases come up. This is the time you have nothing to take care of. Are we really thinking? Are we really normal? And we are here forcibly saying that a must to pende to zipende, the, the, the housing, the fund of housing must be built for who? Honestly, from my corner and the corner of those older persons out there, I'm speaking for them because I'm with them. What is mattering right now to a Kenyan older person, it's not affordable housing, it's affordable life. They cannot afford so many. They need things like diapers. Did you even think about that? If you go to that in crowd and we have a ministry of sanitation, most people there, the older people, most are out there, they are using latrines. If we just imagine 80, 90, 70 older person with arthritis going down in that pit latrine and how they get up. I've met a couple. They even tell me, even when we go to functions like weddings, we go to where other people are going to be happy. I cannot even afford to drink even a soda or a cup of tea or even eat there. I just go there because I'm afraid. I may need to help myself. I, if I go down there, I won't come. They are not even expensive. It's so cheap. And yet, we have a sanitation department. I don't know what it is for, that it never thinks about these people. And they are the ones who are living down there in the rural area. You, so, know, you know my sister. Yes. A country that does not honor its elderly population yes. is a disorderly country. Yes. Can I repeat? Discussed. I didn't want to use the word cast. In use. Because I didn't want to sound very negative. Yes. But a country that, or a society that does not honor its elderly persons or elderly population is a disorderly society. If we cannot prioritize the needs of our elderly persons, our parents, if we cannot prioritize the well-being of our older persons, if we cannot dignify their lives and make them happy during their old age, then our society will have to be disorder, disordered. Wow. I regret that the bill did not go through. I feel, I feel that uh, there's, uh, there are times that members of parliament vote with euphoria, you know, just voting. In fact, after that bill was dropped, with their hearts. because they voted with a, you know, with an acclamation. Oh my goodness. May, may as many of that opinion say nay, and they all said nay. That actually, that afternoon, they dropped like four bills because they wanted everything out of their entry so that they can pass the finance bill.
They wanted everything out of their entry so that they can pass the affordable housing bill. The ones and let that me were tell told you, they must the pass. ones, the ones that they were whipped, instructed to and do. And actually, the majority leader, and I do not fear talking about this, the majority leader whipped members on their phones, telling them we are dropping any bill ahead of us so that we can clear the entry for us to achieve what we want, to pass the finance bill and pass the affordable housing bill. Wow. It is so, very unfortunate. Mwashi, thank you so much. We actually, I was wondering, I was about to ask you what really drives you because we have seen you are one person, you have your own mind, you are very dependent, you do the right things at the right times. We have seen you even decamping, it was decamping the, the Kieleweke during that time. Despite the president having come from Gabu, yeah. you still said, no, I'm going here because I'm seeing something, some light. You decamped to that. You are even uh, stripped of your chairperson. Mm -hmm. yeah? You are chair of uh, I was, transport. Uh, I was in the leadership of the transport, of transport. committee. You are stripped, but yeah. you did not say, because so that I will not be stripped, mm. I will not do it. Mm. If it's not right, it's not right. Yeah. We have seen you standing, despite having been elected, by, I mean, a UDA on UDA ticket, you see, if something is not, it is affecting the people that I represent in Kambu. Those are the words you used. If this is affecting, I'm going back to my people, and when I talk to them and ask them if they are supporting this, if they are not for it, I'm not for it, because I'm here to support them. So, Moesh, I was like, you're so independent, Kenyans, who is this Gadoni? But the older fraternity, all the organizations just feel represented. Today I'm with Mwishmiwa here. She has explained about the bill that we never knew what happened. We've been working in the darkness. Whatever we do, we do from our pockets. This is something which have, this, some of these organizations, even the government should be supporting because like, we are literally doing the government's work. The constitution says what? Article 57. It is a responsibility of the state and the family to take to give reasonable care, I don't know whatever reasonable is, care to our, that's all we have about our older persons. It can never be country. reasonable when yes, our yes. elderly persons are begging in the streets. That is not reasonable care. It can never be reasonable care when our elderly people are being beaten physically, like the case we saw in the water. Yes. It can never be reasonable care when our elderly persons are sleeping hungry, neglected in homesteads. It can never be reasonable care when our elderly persons are detained in hospitals because they cannot afford to pay for their Imagine. medical bills. And they worked for this country. And they worked for this country. Some of them gave all they had during their youth days to build Kenya. It can never be reasonable care that some of these parents are locked up in cells. Imagine. Some of them are being locked up in cells because they... Have, Actually, the other they day have I saw one. They have problems with inheritance. Uh, no, no, the I mean, they are being forced to yeah. shed off their property. Yeah. So, so it can never be reasonable care. And they chased out of their own land. And, and what, is, the what work, is happening in Naivasha? And what is the work yeah. of a um, member of parliament? If a member of parliament cannot go to parliament and defend the rights of the elderly persons of Kenya in line, with the constitution, Article 57. Yes. What is the member? What is the role of the member, member of parliament? Actually, we would like you I to tell. I am very tell disappointed yes. with the 12th, with the 13th parliament. Maybe they don't know. I am very disappointed, especially with the voters of Kenya. Yes. And more specifically, I am very disappointed with the voters of Central Kenya, Mount Kenya region, Talk to because them. we no longer vote people for what they stand for. We vote for people because they are either musicians, they are cake matrons, Money. they are comedians, they are out, outstanding, people who are outstanding in the society as, yeah. you know, aggressors, aggressors yeah. the bling blings. Those are the people we are voting. And, and I'm sorry, if I'm stepping on anybody's toe, I, I ask for forgiveness, but that's the truth. So when you elect a musician, just because he guitared and you loved his music and you want him <laughs> to carry your life, carry, carry your livelihood, 
then we are wrong. And that is, th those are the results. You know, when I was walking from parliament right now, I have met a, a member of parliament who is serving his third term. And he's a doctor. He's actually a pediatric surgeon. Yes. He's called Dr. James Nyukal. A medical doctor who speaks and we listen. He's there on behalf of his constituency. And when he's, to he's, talks in, he he's talking in parliament, everybody must listen. Wow. Because he's speaking sense. He's speaking rights. He's speaking protocols. He's speaking law. He's speaking medicine. He's speaking surgeon, surgery. You know? Subject so to you that compare that Dr. Nyekar and a member of parliament from <laughs> Mount Kenya, then you laugh the way you are laughing. <laughs> and that is problem. why that doctor mm -hmm. actually, when we met today, yeah. he just told me, Wamushomba, I feel for you because I was one of your supporters on that elderly care person's bill that you brought in parliament. That is what he told me today. And this bill was dropped about four months ago. I know. Four months ago. But he told me today, I felt bad when I saw members of parliament voting out a bill that would have helped me because I'm almost retiring. Oh my goodness. So Mount Kenya leaders, yes. especially voters, need to awaken. They need to learn a lesson from this parliament. They need to learn a lesson. And next time, whether Wamushamba will be on the ballot or not, elect people who have conscious substance. People who can read documents day and night. If you look at my eyes, they are red. Today I have read. I woke up at 4 a.m. And since 4 a.m. I've been reading. Because I was to chairing a committee. Every I was chairing a committee yes. on constitution. Yes. Yes. I needed to understand every bit of what I'm going to chair. Yes. So I must read before I present myself as a yes. chair. Yes. I'm not trying to say that I am good, but I'm trying to say... Parliament require yeah. brains, yeah. Oh, require soberness, yeah. require people who are serious. Don't elect somebody just because this person is rich. And you don't even know where he got this money from. You don't even know what, what are his principles in life. I think it's time we learned a lesson. Listen, my sister. Yes. Just the other day we voted out a bill. We, we voted a bill in. Yeah to close all children's homes. And that day I was not in parliament. I was actually not in the country. So I was following mm -hmm. parliament online. It was, it was easier to vote that. And I saw people say, nee, and a yeah, against a bill, or towards a bill, that is going to punish the orphans, orphan children of Kenya. And the other day I met some ladies who are members of parliament and I asked them, ladies, did you vote for that bill? They said, yes. And I asked them, so do you care as mothers? mothers? Yes. Do you really care as mothers? Okay, assume those children are children born out of wedlock. They are children born out of families that are disintegrated. Assume their mothers are alcoholics and drunkards. Assume, just assume that they qualified to be punished. Is that okay. what the constitution of Kenya says? The Bill of Rights in Chapter 4. So, I am here hoping that I'm going to speak to somebody watching us. I am here hoping to talk to the next voter of this country. To ask them, we have learned through the hard way, the painful way. Next time, choose your leaders and choose your leaders wisely. Wow.